So again, how are you supposed to know how these molecules are actually bonded together to be able to determine you know, what their potential shape is and their polarity is and um, how much energy is going to be released when the molecule forms? Well, we owe a lot to a scientist named G. N. Lewis who actually devised a method by just looking at the periodic table and you can actually do this just on paper with dots and lines and you can figure out what the bonding is going to be and the relative idea of what the shape is going to be for every molecule. This was absolutely fantastic and these are called, in honor of G. N. Lewis, Lewis diagrams. So, how do you do a Lewis diagram to be able to determine again what these molecules actually look like, at least on paper? Well, what you do is this. Here's some rules. Number one, you take the sum of all the valence electrons that there are in the atom. Now look, valence electrons are the ones that are involved in chemical bonding, not any others. So when you count up how many valence electrons there are, those are the ones that are involved with chemical bonding. Now, how do you actually count up valence electrons? Well, you know, and you remember from the periodic table, hydrogen only has one electron, so it's got one valence electron. Helium would actually have two valence electrons because it's 1s2. The outermost number tells you the number of valence electrons in that electron configuration. Now, uh, when you get to something like oxygen, oxygen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p4. Now, how many total electrons are in that outermost number? Well, there's 2s and 2p electrons totaling six there. That means this, that oxygen has six valence electrons, right? How do you do it? It's so simple. All you have to do is look at the group number of the periodic table. Now I know, here's the thing that we're doing. We're doing this for molecules and not ionic compounds. So generally, we don't even worry about these guys except for hydrogen. But we worry about these guys over here, these non-metals here that are green right here on this periodic table. So the deal is, these are really groups 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, 13, because that's the way that they're given these days. But really, they used to be groups 3A, 4A, 5A, 6A, 7A, 8A. So now, let's go back to that system and just say that when you go group 3, or 13, but let's go 3, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, that's the number of valence electrons that there are. That group number, isn't that cool? So this has three valence electrons, and this group down here has four, and five, and six, and seven, and eight. And now we can put together non-metals to form molecules that are covalently bonded, and we can actually figure out what those uh, molecules are going to look like. Uh, we don't do this for ionic compounds, because what we're doing is, for ionic compounds, we know that they form these crystal lattices, and that lattice energy discussion before kind of covered that. So what do we do? We take the sum of all the valence electrons, and then we do this. We make bonds by drawing lines, which represents two electrons, always. And then, we take the rest of the electrons that aren't involved in bonds, and we put them around the molecule in what we call lone pairs that actually then just get stuck into, three-dimensionally, into orbitals around the molecules. Okay, with those rules right there, and this last one, you should be able to make these molecules. And the last rule is that except for hydrogen, which likes to complete something called a duet, or only have two electrons that it shares, the total number of electrons around any other atom is going to be eight. And so that, that's called an octet. Take the sum of all the valence electrons, put lines for bonds and dots for something called lone pairs, and then make sure that you assign an octet to elements that are not hydrogen, and you've got yourself a, a diagram that actually makes sense and is totally legitimate. Okay, hydrogen. Hydrogen is H2. And H2, because on the periodic table, Hydrogen's in group one and only has one valence electron. The sum of all the valence electrons, I just like to put that in brackets all the time, just to remind myself uh, of what I've counted. Two H's would have two total valence electrons. How do you actually then draw this? You do this. Here's an H. Bond it to an H. There's a bond. That's two electrons. That's the total. That's done. Each of these hydrogens is sharing two electrons at any one given time. Because electrons are moving around real fast, aren't they? So here's the deal. This hydrogen, two electrons. It's completed its duet. This hydrogen, two electrons. Here, I know you've counted it twice, but for this, for this hydrogen, it's sharing two electrons, and therefore they've completed their duets, and that is what hydrogen's all about. 
a single bonded H to H represents the hydrogen molecule. Okay, now for fluorine, fluorine is in group 7A of the periodic table, or group 17. So just take 10 off and you get the group number, right, <laughs> of, of that uh, uh, on the periodic table. So here's the deal. Fluorine is in group 7, and there's two of them here, so that's a total of 14 valence electrons. 14! So how are you going to actually put that all around there? Well, this is what you do. Here's fluorine, and you bond it to another fluorine. That's it. That's all you do. Because that, they're bonding, right? This is all about chemical bonding. So you put in one bond, that's two electrons. Now you distribute the rest as lone pairs in the other corners around the atom, like this. So that's two. We've got to get to 14. Watch. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen. Around the corners, four corners, because four times two is eight, hey? So here's the deal, watch this. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen is the total number of valence electrons. I've accounted for all of them. But does each fluorine have its octet, or eight electrons? Two, four, six, eight for that one. Two. 4, 6, 8 for that one. It's perfect. Fluorine is a single bonded molecule. Cool. Now, oxygen. Oxygen is in group 6 of the periodic table, so 6 times 2 is going to be 12 total valence electrons. Where are all those valence electrons involved in chemical bonding around there? By the way, there's more, there's more electrons, right? They're the inner 1s electrons for both of these atoms, but they're not involved in the bonding. Just the outermost, okay? Assigned by the group number. 